Welcome back to Introduction to Programming Using C++. What I want to go over today are arrays. So what is an array? An array is a structured data type where I can access elements by their name and index. And when you declare an array, you're declaring a fixed number of components within memory, which you can access by its index. And you can actually assign values to, their, to the array randomly. And you can access values to the array randomly, depending on what index you select. So when you declare an array, you first start out by declaring the array with the size. In this particular example, this array has a size of 10. With arrays and in programming in general, your arrays will always start at index 0. So if you have a size of 10, you have the ability to access your array by index from 0 to 9. If you had an array which is a size of 20, then you have the ability to access indexes from 0 to 19. You still have 20 elements, but because of the 0, you it looks like you have one less, but that's not the case. It's just that it starts at 0. So array is a static variable, so what it means is when you compile your code at compile time, it will allocate storage in memory for the arrays that you do declare. So the array will always have a base type. You can have an integer array, a double array, a char array, a long array, it depends. And that base type will dictate how much storage is in each cell. And I will show you that in a minute. You can access each index by its subscript. If I wanted to access index 2, you, just, you would just uh, indicate that I want the second element in the array, or the second index in the array and it will give you back the value. So an array has multiple, you can have multiple dimensions in an array. You can have a one-dimensional array or a two-dimensional array. If you do a one-dimensional array, that means the array is going to look like the following. Right? That's a one-dimensional array. You have basically one row. If you have a two-dimensional array, you're going to have a row and a column. So you would have this row and whatever number of columns that you wish. You can have two columns, three columns depending on what you want. It, in memory or graphically, it really looks like a table, basically, if you do a two-dimensional array. The array name will hold the base address. And I'm going to go into this in a little bit on the code so you can see. Uh, because by words, it doesn't really make much sense. And it really makes more sense when you're using functions and you're passing the array through a function. OK, so let's go. Let's get to it. So in this code example, I've declared a variable called int number, just so we can refresh our memory of variables. So i number is an integer variable that has four bytes, right? So in memory, I have four bytes allocated, and my variable name is called i number. With an array, it's a little different. With an array, you're going to have a name, and then you have a open bracket, close bracket, with the amount of elements that you've allocated. So in this particular case, as I mentioned before, we have a 0 to 19 range. So I cannot access, uh, this is not, should not be able to do this. OK, that's not good, because that means I'm overstepping my boundaries in memory. Now C++ may let you, depending on the compiler, may let you do this, but you really should not. So we stick within our boundaries from 0 to 19. And what does that mean in terms of the base type? Well, the base type here is 4 bytes. Because you're allocating an array with multiple elements, that means that each element is going to be 4 bytes. So essentially what you have here is an allocation of 80 bytes. Why? Because each box is 4 bytes, and you have 20 boxes. So if I multiply 4 times 20, then I have 80 bytes of allocation. Same thing with my double array. I have 15 boxes. My range is from 0 to 14. And if I want to find out how many bytes I'm allocating, well, a double data type has 8 bytes. You multiply 8 times 15, which is going to give you 120 bytes of allocation in memory. And as I've told you before, you can assign values to each element in an array uh, randomly. So I don't necessarily have to iterate through my array or, or try and find an element through my array to, to assign a value to it. 
I can just assign a value by its index. So we started index 0, index 0 is the first element, and I want to assign the value of 10. If index 1, I can assign the value of 20, and here I can pick and choose and say index 3 and 4 will have these particular values. So if I write this out, you see that the integer values are 0, 1, 0 with index is 10, first index is 20, and then the third index here is 20.4, and the fourth index is 15.3. So I can assign a value, and then I can also access that value by just using the index or subscript. Now let's take a look at trying to print out the array by its name. When you print out a variable, let's let's take a step back. When you print out a variable by its name, so if I did C out I number, right, you would expect that the number 20 would print out. And that's the case. You get 20, which is fine, right? But it's a little different with arrays. With arrays, the name of the variable is going to give you the address of where it is stored in memory, in hexadecimal. This will not print out all the values in IRA. You will not be able to print it out using just the name, because what C++ does is, in the name, it keeps the address. It's going to give you the address of where it actually is in RAM. Same thing for a double array. And each address is going to be unique. Uh, and actually, it, the address of where it starts. Because remember, if we look back here, it's going to give you the address of the zeroth index for that particular array. Okay. So where, while you may think it's going to print out all these values in the array, that's not the case in C++. What's going to happen is it's going to print out not the zero, but it's going to print out the actual location in memory of the hex address of where it starts. So if I do this, see this integer array has been allocated somewhere in RAM and it starts at 28FEE0, that's a hex address, and then the double array starts at 28FE60, which is the hex address again. And again, that's, again, that's, that gives you the address, not the actual array. If you wanted to print out the whole array, then you would have to actually do a loop. You'd have to do, use a loop. Uh, and I can show you that in later lessons. But I'm just teaching the fundamentals of the array. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is we want to see if, well, how, why, why is it that it prints out the address and not the whole array? Well, the first thing is you don't want to copy the whole array when you pass around function in, in functions. So let's say I wrote this function here, right? And I said, you know, sum array of 0 is equal to 10. Whatever. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm writing a function that gets passed in an array of integers with uh, 20 elements. And I'm going to change the 0th index value to 10. Okay? Now, if I pass in my array, Let's let's change the value. Make it. I'm gonna make it 20. If I, I'll make it 25 actually. If I pass in my array to my function, so I say some function, and then I pass in my array that I declared here, right? When you pass in an array, remember what I said. When you the name of the variable gives you the address. If we were pa if C++ didn't work that way and we were passing the actual copy of the array, that's not efficient memory-wise because then you'd have to copy every single element in the array and pass it down to your function, and then it'd have access to. So arrays are never passed by value; they're always passed by reference. You're you're always passing the address of the array of where it's where it's located in memory. Now here, 
it's getting a, a variable called sum array, but it doesn't matter because I'm again arrays are by passed by reference, so this sum array will get uh, assigned the value of the address that's coming in, which is of I array, which is at twenty something F E E E. And now I have the array to play with, and I'm gonna change the value of the zeroth index to twenty five. So if you notice, if I print this value out again, so zero would be, say, before passing function. If I run this, right? So before passing function, integer a is as 10, 20, and then integer array values now I've changed it to 25 now the other thing I wanted you to look at is let's print out the address of this array over here and I'm not using I array the name I'm using some array okay so essentially what this should look like it should be the same address that we're printing up here so some array address See that? Summary address is 28FEE0. Same thing here. So when you pass in a variable that's an array into a function, you're passing in the address. This gets the same address here. That's why when you actually assign some different value, it keeps. It's going to stay with it because you're actually using the same reference for that. So essentially, what you're doing is passing in a pointer a pointer to an address. So uh, that's the way, that's why when, when I told you that the array name holds the base address of the array, of the address of the first component, right? It's the address of the first component. That means that you're actually passing in the address here. And once you pass in the address, then it's going to modify whatever array allocation address was over here with the values and that's why the values change okay and that's why you see that okay so I changed the array and even outside of the function when I did print this out it still kept that value that I changed it which is different from variables because variables if you pass in a variable unless you indicate that it's a pass by reference it will not uh, change the value it actually puts in a copy of it but it's more if it's 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 not a block of data so in a, a, a variable is obviously going to be less space than a, an array imagine you have an array of like two million bytes right uh, we here we're playing with integer and double but when you start talking about objects and array of objects and pointers uh, it's a whole different story but it's good to learn the fundamentals now so you're familiar with as you go through your programming career uh, that's it. I mean, that's it about arrays. It's my simple lesson. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you did learn something out of this and you understand arrays a little bit more.